This is Apostle Charlie Reddish, Life Changes Covenant Ministries. Uh, let's get ready to feast at the table of the Lord. Let's get ready to feast on the Word of God. For the Bible says, Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So today I will be reading and you're always welcome to join in with us, you know, invite others to join in, share. Uh, you can't go wrong by hearing the word of God. So, but today I'll be reading from the book of 1 Corinthians chapters 10, 11, and 12. Get your Bibles, get your iPads, get your whatever you use to read the word and follow along with me. Commence reading <clears throat> at 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 10, and verse 1. Good morning. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, that at all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he stand and take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as, as is common to man, but God is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my beloved brethren and dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many of one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the devil, table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. What self is soul in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, what self is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto others, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not, not, not thine own, but of the other. 
For why is my liberty judge of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, commencing at verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brother, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is in the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judging yourselves, is it common that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for her covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also hearers among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it, <clears throat> and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. 
and the rest will I set in order when I come. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, commencing at verse 1. <clears throat> now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self-seen spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the foot, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble or necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we be bestow more abundant honor, and our uncommonly parts have more abundant commonness. For our commonly parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lack it. That there should be no is schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are, not, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, Helps, governments, diversities of tongues, or all apostles, or all prophets, or all teachers, or all workers of miracles, have all the gift of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Thus I have read. 1 Corinthians chapters 10 through 12. I pray that you ate at the table and you enjoyed the feast of the word of the living God. Thank each and every one of you for tuning in this morning. I sincerely, I sincerely thank you very, very much for tuning in. Please feel free to share. Please feel free to invite others to tune in. And you can go to YouTube, hit that thumbs up button to subscribe and the notification bell. And you'll be notified anytime we come on with whether it be a message, reading or whatever it is. 
you will be notified. So until the next time, to each and every one of you, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. I love you. And may God richly bless you is my prayers. And until the next time, remember this. Don't call it the way you see it. Call it the way you want it to be. God bless you.